Hi, it's snack time. Today I get to work in Honey's beautiful journal. If you've never seen me work in this, I have a flip through of this down below in the description box. Honey does not currently sell journals, unfortunately, but I will link her Instagram below anyway because she has tons of inspiration on her Instagram account. So I highly recommend you check that out. So the reason I want to work in this one today is because my page is going to be a little bit bigger. And the image I want to work with today, which really inspired me, is this one. I just love this bird image. I think this image is my favorite one of my boho birds kit. I will link that for you as well. There's 10 backgrounds. Two of them are more plain and this is one of the more embellished ones. And I thought I would make a pocket using him. And I've already picked out a page. Oh, I just love this beauty. I was thinking of this beautiful page. I think the bird will be beautiful there. Even though this page is 110 GSM, I do want the pocket to be a little more sturdy. So I'm just going to back it with some other cardstock that I have. And this time I'm going to be smart about it and glue it on before I cut it so that I don't have to cut it twice. As with most pages, I have not thought this through farther than choosing the page picking the image I want to work with and hoping that I can find a way to kind of embellish this pocket to make it more fun and interesting. That's as far as I got so far. <laughs> I don't even know the shape of my pocket. I know I obviously want it to be like this, but I'm not sure how much I want to cut off here or do I want to cut off more here. Well, I think I definitely want the rest of the bird free until here at least. Maybe it's going to be less of a pocket and more of a tuck spot as it looks. And if you're not sure about the difference between a pocket and a tuck spot, the difference is that the pocket is usually closed on three sides and you can only put something in from that one open side, whereas a tuck spot is more open and you can put things in from various sides. So let me try to demonstrate. Imagine this was a beautiful piece of ephemera. For example, if I would glue it down here, I could put something in from this side, from the top and from here. So that makes it a tuck spot. But if I glue this pocket down here, here and here, like this, it's a pocket because you can only put something in from this side. And I always get the terms mixed up, even though I, I know and understand the definition. When I talk about them, I mix them up often. So apologies if I have confused you in the past. <laughs> okay, I need to think. I can't talk and think. How do I want this to go? I don't really want to cut all the way down here. That would be a very strange looking tuck spot. I could just cut around these flowers. Oh, since there's flowers, maybe I can add some more flowers. One thing that I always enjoy is when I have an image and then I look what's in the image and if I can replicate some of the items in the image and embellish the image with those, that always makes for a super fun page. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. I'll cut up until this flower. I also have leaves that I could add and maybe even a feather. The first thing I need to do is distress the edges and I'm going to try this with my frayed burlap because I think this color will suit this image better than either the vintage photo or the walnut stain. I don't want to glue this on yet because I'm not sure yet what else I'm adding and maybe it will be something that I have to sew or attach in some way where I'll need access to this back side. So I want to be careful with that. So I checked my flowers and I have these that I think might work well here because it's the kind of a similar flower shape to here, although the color is very different. That's just because the paper I printed this on is a photo paper which has a very gray undertone. But this fits with this, so actually I think that would be okay. And it kind of warms the whole thing up a little bit. Don't really want to cover that flower completely. So maybe like this. 
Should we add a third one for good measure on this side, maybe? That could be cute. And since we have a feather here and it's a bird, why not try to add some real feathers? So I have some here that might work with the colors. So let's audition a few. So this again would make it warmer because it's this beautiful beige tone. The thing is, I don't want to cover up this beautiful feather here. Oh, why don't we add the feathers behind him? That is cute. I don't know if it's practical. Oh my goodness, when they're like this and like this, that is adorable. And it picks up this cream color. I love that. Okay, so we'll definitely keep these in mind. I'm not sure if black is too much drama. I want this page to be a light page. They do, of course, come out better, but it gives a whole different vibe to the page. I want it to be more like a light spring happy page. And this is maybe too much drama, although it's gorgeous. So that's a no. What about white? White would also work. We have white here, of course. The white is more visible against this background. Definitely an option. I thought green would work because we have a green here. But now I don't know if I like that. I think it would be cute if the background was lighter, but with this dark background, I'm not loving it. That's a no for the green. And let's just check a fun, bright yellow. Not my go-to color, even though I love yellow, but I love the gold yellow, the darker sunny yellow. Not really a fan of this. It would be okay. It definitely makes it cheerful and look like spring, but no. <laughs> I'm going to go with these beige ones and I added another one here, which I think is really cute. And I stuck another one in there. So four feathers in total. And the reason is I wanted to make these flowers not look so alien. And this just makes it more cohesive now that we have two different types of embellishments in that color that kind of warms up the whole page, whereas the white ones made the page cooler, although it would have been cute as well. Then I just had another idea. I'm not sure I'm going to like this, but I want to give it a try. So this is the other half of that print. And I'm thinking, what if I cut this one out and then try to add that here? I'm not sure yet what the purpose of that would be, maybe just to make this a little less blank, although it's actually really nice to have a place for your eye to rest so that not everything is so busy. But I'm not sure, I might like it, I might not. So I'm just going to glue this on some more cardstock and cut that out and then we can see if we like it or not. So I've cut it out, inked it up. Let's see what it could look like. I'm not sure what the purpose of this is. I'm not sure I am loving that. No, definitely not here. No, not really feeling that. Maybe if we add something else down here. I have this eyelash trim that I have dyed with coffee. This it was what it looks like originally and I just sprayed it with my coffee solution that I use to dye my papers. Beautiful color. Should we try maybe tying a bow around it? <laughs> I don't know, that might just look ridiculous, but we gotta try it, otherwise we'll never know. We'll always think, well, maybe that would have been the perfect touch, right? Gotta try it. And you never know, even though this might not work, maybe this will spark another idea. I think once we take supplies in our hands and play with it, that's the best way to spark ideas. So we have a bow around this now. <laughs> is that gonna make it any better? No, I don't think it is. It does pull your attention here, whereas before there was nothing. So your attention is going solely up here and here it's spreading your gaze more evenly. But at the same time, as I said before, think about it. It's really nice when you have so much going on that there is something on the page where your eye is at peace, where it's just calm. And that could be that spot. I have this beautiful ribbon, which is very similar to this ribbon that is here, except it's a lot wider. It would be really nice to bring out some of this turquoise as well. So I'm going to try to cut this ribbon lengthwise. 
in half or even in thirds. I will try thirds and see if I can get similar strips like we have here. I don't know if these tear or not. Let's try it. Oh, they're coming apart. Oh no, not a good idea. All right, we'll have to cut it. I don't know how evenly I can manage to cut this. Okay, that worked better than I thought actually. And they're actually naturally curving in the same way. The question is, how do we do this? How do we attach them? So I have an idea. What if I take my craft knife and make a slit right here where the ones in the image are coming out from and that way I could stick these through and tape them on from the back. I also want them to be curved a little bit more. So maybe we can do that with our scissors without destroying them, hopefully. Yep, I'd say that worked. Let's have an operation. I'm going to slide this card underneath where I want to cut so I don't slit Honey's beautiful journal. Yep. That worked. So now we have to try to get these through. How do we do that? <laughs> Just going to try to push them through. I don't want the slit to be too visible afterwards. So I don't want to make it too big. Okay. And now I can tape these down. So I'm really glad I did not glue that pocket down yet. Otherwise I would not have been able to do that. And since these are sticking up quite a bit at the moment, I'm just going to add a little bit of glue right underneath there at the top to kind of keep them down. Wow, I am astonished how well this worked. It's exactly like in the image. How fun! I also have these fun leaves which I cut from some collage fodder that I had. These are these Sizzix Thinlets. The number is 665559. I will link this for you below. I think these are so fun, but I don't know if these would be too much. So the color we have here is similar to the green we already have, so that's good. We're not introducing another new color. I don't know if it's too much or not. I'm wondering if I should add some turquoise onto these. I'm going to try that and maybe try that on the third leaf. So I'll take another one because maybe if we have turquoise here and we have turquoise here, we might need some there to balance it. Ooh, that might be cute. I took a fourth leaf so I can experiment a little bit because I don't know which color is going to fit better. I have this watercolor here, very pigmented from White Nights. And I have this Distress Oxide Peacock Feathers. So I want to try both to see which one will match our ribbon more. So this is the color of the ribbon. I mean, looking at it like this, it would be this one. But you never know because these change. So let's try that on one side. And then we'll spritz that. So that's fairly light, but I think that would work. Now on the other side, let's try this watercolor. This one I will add with a brush. This looks a lot darker now. It might still change. Or maybe a mixture of both. Okay, let me dry it and then we'll see how it looks. So this is what it looks like when it's dry. The Distress Oxide has completely turned green and the watercolor still is turquoise, even though it's darker. So I think I'm going to go with the watercolor for this. And I'm specifically concentrating on the tips because the lower parts are going to be tucked in. So these here came out a lot darker than this one. I actually like this one more. Let's see what it looks like with our bird. What do we think? Do we like it? I think I do like it. I glued all the elements on 
and in the back I used a lot of regular tape because I wanted to make sure that it's as flat as possible because when we stick something in I don't want it to be caught so now I can glue this down so I'll glue it on these two sides using PVA glue and then there's one more detail I want to add do you see these spots here I want to replicate some of those in some other areas of the page and I'm going to take this a little round thing which is the top of a paintbrush you know when you buy paintbrushes new they're often protected with something like this and I'm going to use my buff titanium which I had already decluttered but there's still some in here <laughs> so I can get that and try to make some of these circles maybe down here okay that's a bubble <laughs> can we pop that yeah we can <laughs> <laughs> oh these are so fun so i'm just kind of turning it a little bit oh that's so cute it's these little details that just make a page so fun let's add some here in the background as well okay these are not turning out very well I think I have too much paint on here now. Cleaned it off, added some more paint. I also love how Honey's stamp is kind of coming out like this. That's just beautiful. Thank you, Honey. Good foresight. <laughs> Maybe you have an image already. It doesn't have to be from a digital. Maybe you have a book page image where you can try something fun like this. Otherwise, you're welcome to check out the link below for this particular digital. If you enjoyed this video, you might also really enjoy this one right here. Love you guys. Mwah! Mwah!